What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today we are in the backyard and we are going to be talking about putting. More specifically, we're gonna be talking about Isaac Robinson, the most recently crowned world champion and talking about his putting style because I think it is a super unique study and an idea that you maybe can embrace and maybe learn on how to recreate Isaac's putting style so that if you've been struggling on those longer putts, this may be exactly what you're looking for. But before we dive into the specifics, of course, we gotta ask the most important question of the day. How are you doing today, Adam? Are you having a good one? So catch me if I fall. Who is Isaac Robinson? Isaac Robinson is a pro tour player and now world champion from Georgia who has come onto the scene. Last year was his first full year touring and this year he is continuing to crush it and is becoming known as one of the most consistent players on tour. And when we look at his putting, that is one of the places where we see him to be extremely consistent because he's not spending a ton of time on his putts sort of lining things up and over again. He just steps up and notoriously smacks the chains gets it done I think back to when he was at Idlewild last year where he won the event and the person he was going against had hit a really long putt on hole 17 to sort of bring themselves back into contention and Isaac steps up and it almost felt like before the coverage had even settled Isaac was able to just step up drain the putt over an OB Creek and put the nail in the coffin sealing his victory for that first tournament sealing his first ever Pro Tour win but as a coach I find studying how people throw the disc, specifically how you putt with the disc, because putting is such a unique motion that at the end of the day, all you really need to be doing is finding an efficient way that gets you to put the disc in the basket as consistently and repeatable as possible. Now, for a little bit of context before we dive further into the video, I wanna go ahead and let you know that I come from a background of close-up magic. I love sort of the sleight of hand, things like that, and one of my favorite things when I first got into close-up magic trying to do was I would watch someone do a trick on YouTube or someone do a trick online and I would see if I could recreate the effect. Now, if I could recreate the effect and do it easily, then I didn't necessarily need to know how they did it because I had already accomplished the same effect. So when we break down Isaac's form here when it comes to putting and sort of give you insight into the technique he's using, this may not be an exact study if you talk with Isaac himself of him saying that this is how he creates the power and uses the technique. But in doing a little bit of study myself and practicing around in the backyard, I have seen how I can create a similar result and a similar looking result to sort of give that Isaac Robinson consistency that you may be able to adopt if you've had a hard time finding a putting style of your own. So for context, there are two standard types of putts that create the two base camps and everyone is either in one or the other, or they're living in this sort of hybrid of a spush putt and we'll talk about that in a second. So for a push putt, this is where you are going to see more of that pendulum swinging motion. Think of your Calvin Heinbergs and your Ricky Wysockis of the world who bring that putter sort of low to high. It almost comes down below the waistline, below the belt line, and it has this swinging motion. If you're a basketball player or you ever were in PE and having a hard time hitting free throws, then that granny style shot where you're bringing it down low, firing it up, keep the disc on a pendulum motion. That's more of a traditional push putt. Spin putts, on the other hand, involve you sort of keeping the disc on more of a flat surface. I think of the Latitude 64 video where Tomas was teaching Jonathan how to spin putt, and he talked about how you were gonna take the disc, slide it back on a table to your belt loop, to your waistline, to your belly, and then slide it back across that table. This is more like an Eagle McMahon or a Simon Lazat. If you play in traditionally windier environments, most people end up being traditional spin putters because the spinning of the disc is how you generate that pop and that, that forward momentum, and it becomes less affected by the wind. However, if you truly dedicate to the spin putt, while you can make longer putts, it's going to make it tougher because if you miss the chains or you're off, you're going to be sailing past the basket, leaving yourself with a longer comebacker on the other side. Push putt's strength is the fact that even when you miss, it doesn't go too far past the basket, so really you don't end up three putting very often at all. 
However, it is a little tougher to generate the power from range on that push putt. So if you're farther away, you have to modify. This is where someone like Gannon Burr comes into the equation who has a lot more of sort of a pitch style putt where he's bringing the disc down to his left side and throwing it forward and putting it back online. This is a high level mechanic to do and takes a lot of practice. And I thought when studying Isaacs that we were gonna be in a similar boat because Isaac from the looks of it seems to be an extreme spin putter. And when you watch his motion, his hand sort of comes around the disc and when he throws, his hand opens up and the finishing position that he's in is here. Now, if you ever find yourself studying players, I want you to be very careful about trying to go from a start position to a finishing position because the body subconsciously does a lot of things after the throw has occurred that may or may not actually be part of the throw. It could simply be a tension point that your body is creating and the finishing position is just when you turn your brain off, the subconscious takes over and gets you into a softer or more relaxed position, which I think is actually somewhat the case for Isaac. When we think about Isaac's putt and it is this curl the wrist in and extend it out, I tried to just simply go position to position when trying to recreate this. And that may be some of you who watched Isaac succeed out there in the world championships or watched him succeed at Champions Cup if you're following professional disc golf. By the way, if you're a casual player and you're watching this, I'm gonna guess that you probably know about professional disc golf, but speaking from experience of someone who played the game for several years and never connected the fact that like, the names on these discs actually connect to real people who are doing this professionally, you should definitely check out Pro Disc Golf. It's very interesting and uh, the sport only continues to grow. So trying to just simply recreate the position that Isaac was in, I went with a deep curl of the wrist and tried to just extend it out. And that became my issue over and over again. I had a really hard time getting this. Sometimes it worked, but if I gave it a lot of power, I found myself in opening up that wrist, really struggling to get this to go on a straight line. Hey buddy. For some of you who are like, man, I don't understand how Robbie's so good at putting. When you have that guy running around barking at you if you miss the putt, trust me, you get him in the basket a whole lot more often. Now let's talk about misses for a three second because if you are a more traditional spin putter and you're putting a ton of spin on the disc and that is how you're propelling the disc forward is just sheer spin, then we'll look at this diagram of a basket right here. If you're more of a traditional spin putter, your miss is going to be left and right. And what that's going to be is a wrist involvement. As a right-handed player, if you're missing left a lot of times, you're not involving the wrist enough. And if you're pulling it to the right, that means that you are involving too much wrist which was the case of trying to recreate Isaac's approach. To finish the diagram, if you're missing high on the basket, that means that you're giving it too much power and that's sort of an aim issue on a high to low. And if you're missing low into the cage and that's not giving it enough power to get there. Now this diagram technically applies to all putting, but you'll see the left and right miss become a lot more prominent for spin putters. And you'll see that high to low miss become a lot more prominent for push putters. We wanna take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video. That's right, we're talking about this dot. Hopefully that looked really cool on the channel because now I gotta pick all these up. Anywho, we're talking about Distop, my favorite putting aid on the market and it is not even close. As you've seen throughout this video on each of my baskets, there is not a basket that I have in my house that does not have a Distop on it. And it has been that way for a long time. As I have practiced different types of putts, different types of elevation change, whatever it may be, whether I'm lower in my backyard putting uphill or I'm in the uphill part of my yard putting downhill, a disc dot gives me a aiming point on the basket, truly embracing Mel Gibson's motto, aim small, miss small. When I putt with disc dots on the basket, it gives me immediate feedback knowing, hey, your disc hit exactly where you were aiming for and I get to focus on a single chain link versus the entirety of the basket. Because if I focus on this chain link and I hit it, fantastic. But even if I miss just an inch or two or even like half a foot to the right, I'm still in the basket. If I'm trying to aim at the basket in its entirety and I miss, well, congratulations. That's just a quack and a half. But something really exciting with Distot, who's been a longtime friend of the channel, is they've actually combined forces with another longtime friend of the channel, Jesse, over at Trash Panda. 
That's right, every single disc dot you're seeing now is made from fully recycled discs. It is made entirely out of those. It's crazy being someone who had some of the original disc dots in my hand to see them come this far. This plastic feels so good and you may even recognize this blue from your favorite neutral putter the inner core. I love the color options we've been presented with with this and also I mean you can even see in like the recyclingness of it like there's red swirls inside this blurple. We got blue, we got purple, we got red. Y'all so many options and I know some of you may be watching this and you're like gonna be the naysayer. Well Robbie why don't you just use a piece of a well, Mr. YouTube, man, why don't you just use a piece of electrical tape on it? that will be fine. You can move that around. You're right. I could put tape all over these chains and make them not as effective. And also, when I want to change targets in the middle of putting, instead of having to be able to just clip one on, move it around, I have to pull the tape, unwrap it all the way around. It's just not as easy, and it is definitely not as beautiful looking on your basket. It's like Christmas lights for your basket, because guess what? They even make glow dots. I truly accredit a lot of the putting practice success that I found to putting practice with disc dots. So if you wanna grab disc dots of your own, head over to disc.usa.com and be sure to use code RCDiscGolf at checkout. Save yourself a little bit of money and a few strokes while you're out there on the course. So one video that really took things to the next level for me actually came from another local YouTube channel over in Georgia called Disc God. Disc God has the connections with Isaac. I know Isaac, Alden, Ezra are actually really plugged into their local community and really fun to see them get involved with even a local YouTube company such as Ace Run is from the Georgia area. You've got Swanky from the normal area and Disc God who's still newer to the scene also trying to start their YouTube channel up and it's really fun to see pros sort of give back to those environments. So Isaac went on there talking about his putt and a key factor about this was the angle of which Isaac likes the putt to come into the basket. While most putters are trying to get their putt to come in as flat as possible and to fly into the chains, Isaac leans in to the hyzer angle. Realizing that he was putting it on hyzer actually opened up a concept that I think less people talk about in the disc golf world. And it's something my coach taught me and I've tried to instill it in other students in the future. And that is feel the weight of the disc. What do we mean by feel the weight of the disc? These little circles are only 175 grams. So if I over grip the disc and I grab it really tight and I have it really tight in my hands, it doesn't actually feel that heavy. It just feels sort of like an extension of my fingers. And therefore, when I'm going to throw putts, I'm going to over wrist or over excite or over throw this thing. And that's how I'm gonna get that too much wrist involvement. However, when I feel the weight of the disc, when I feel the weight of it, notice that I hold it almost a little lighter, not so light that it's like just barely hanging on there, but I want to feel this disc become heavy because when it is heavy, it is a lot easier for me to toss that into a forward direction or toss that weight in a direction which allows me to align the shot and throw a more accurate throw. When I combine this with Isaac's principle of wanting to come in on hyzer, I actually feel like I'm throwing just more simple power hyzer straight at the basket. And when you think about that concept and look at Isaac's putt, he actually is putting a good bit of zip or pop, or as my friend Nathan would say, he's giving it the beans. So what does this look like translated to the basket? Rather than thinking about this as a full on spin putt where I'm curling the wrist all the way in and then opening it all the way up, what I want to do is I want to think about sort of spinning. I'm still going to curl in a little bit because Isaac definitely exaggerates that curl for his technique, but I'm going to think about throwing this thing on hyzer. So when I first learned this idea, I actually had to extreme exaggerate that hyzer and just throw these mini hyzers. You can notice that disc is coming in almost vertical to the basket. On this short of a distance, because I am keeping it on that hyzer and throwing the weight of the disc, opening up my hand, it's not really coming off of the line hardly at all because I'm using more of a push putt method, which is supinating my wrist. I'm turning my palm up a little bit and I'm tossing the disc forward. That's how Isaac is getting that finger pop and that movement while opening it up to the right. Now what's fascinating about this 
is that this feels a little frightening when I am closer to the basket. When I'm right here, it feels a little scary to sort of zip them into the basket. And I think it's very interesting that Isaac is sponsored by Prodigy because their baskets don't have a lot of a cut through potential like these veterans or these patriots might have where there's a lot of more room to cut through the chains which could be the weakness of a more hysery putt and why if you're putting on these types of baskets you would want to get that thing to come in a little more flat because it has less of a chance of slicing all the way through the chains prodigy baskets however with their cross chains make it a lot more difficult for that to come through because once it hits the spider web it usually knocks down but the further I get away from the basket, this is where this putt just continues to shine and I continue to find consistency. And because I'm throwing it on hyzer, I'm letting it have the opportunity to sort of crash into the basket. You can see right there, even if I'm off a little bit to the right, because I'm letting it hyzer into the basket, it has a chance to cut in to the strong side of the chains, which is where I can find a lot of success with this putt and with this throw. Now over time, as you become more comfortable with this technique, you can spend less time on this exaggerated hyzer and try to add a little more supination or a little more finger pop to it to get it to bit a little more flat. There I added too much wrist and not enough supination. Whoop. I did the tripod. But as you can see, it's definitely not a technique necessarily that I've spent hours upon hours upon hours of researching, but just giving a proper understanding of the mechanic, I'm able to, in just a few backyard sessions, start adding some consistency to the flight. And I'm all over the basket, and that's with just a little bit of work on a putting style that I'm not traditionally using while I'm out there on the course. So where do I think this shines? Well, let's look at the statistics for Isaac compared to the field. Pulling him up along with the two other people that are really in the conversation for player of the year, you've got Calvin Heinberg, who is 87% from Circle 1X this year during the Pro Tour season, which puts him in 19th place. Gannon Burr is a little higher up in that 87% and puts him in 14th place overall. And Isaac is at 85%, dropping him all the way back to 45th on the season. Now this number is also a little bit skewed because if you've played any Pro Tour events, you could only show up for one weekend on the Pro Tour and get really good stats as opposed to these guys who are playing more consistently out there and have a lot more info and data in their data set to actually populate these numbers. 85 and 87% are a lot more impressive when you've done it over, let's say, 15 to 18 weekends versus just one or two. Now, what is interesting is we look at Isaac has 32% success from circle two in the season. That puts him in 18th place as opposed to Calvin, who's at 31%, dropping all the way back to 28th place overall. And the leader, actually one that we referenced earlier, is Gannon Burr in first place, who has been at 41% this season from Circle 2, which is kind of a mind-boggling statistic when you think about it. And that comes a lot more down to what we talked about earlier of Gannon is much more of that pitch style player coming from the side of the hip his putt has a lot of power to it, and we have seen him traditionally on softer baskets have a lot more spit out opportunities because Gannon's putt is so powerful. So the beauty of Isaac's putt, what we're here for, is that I do think it gives you a lot of consistency if you're having a really hard time generating power on your putt this could be a really fun putt to mess around with and see if you can sort of adapt it and spin it into your own. That way you can find that consistency. But thinking about that hyzer and pitching the weight of the disc into the basket could be exactly what you may be missing for finding distance or power on the putting green, especially those of you, let's say, who are at that 25 foot and beyond range, where it's just a hope and a prayer of you making it to the basket. So if you found this video helpful and you would love to see us break down more types of putts while we're perusing and looking through the Pro Tour, I would love to be as helpful as I can and try to give you guys more options when it comes to finding a putting style that fits your game. As you watch me putt on the channel, you can pretty much assume who I based my putt after and have modified it slightly along the way in order to make it my own. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again to Distop for sponsoring today's video. As always, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and please make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're going to leave you with the birdie.